Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. This series will explore the water side dynamics of a typical oil field once through steam generator. So what do we have to gain by understanding the water side dynamics of an OTSG? The answer is reliability and increased production rates. I have heard a few common frustrations in SAG-D control rooms. Operations teams feel that OTSGs seem to do some weird things. Some teams have seen safety valves lift routinely on OTSG light off. Others have seen the odd trip on superheat even though the measured steam quality was low. Most of the operations teams have experience with drum boilers and they feel that OTSGs are less reliable than drum boilers. So what is the value of improving the reliability of an OTSG? Let's consider a typical 250 million BTU an hour OTSG with a rated feed water flow of 150 tons an hour. At $20 a barrel for bitumen, an extra 1% steam quality is worth about $600,000 per year. An OTSG trip is assumed to take one hour to get back into full production, and this is equal to $5,000 in lost production. One trip per week is equal to $250,000 per year in lost production. If we understand how an OTSG behaves, then we can expect to operate it in a safer manner, and we can expect to control it better for more reliable operation, and we can increase production rates. The water side behavior determines how we should control the feed water flow rate and the firing rate. This is why it is valuable to understand the water side dynamics of an OTSG. I have been in the consulting business for 18 years and consulting in the SAG-D industry for about 10 years. I don't have a steam ticket, but I have been around boilers a fair bit. I have done extensive troubleshooting with SAG-D water hammer issues. A lot of the water hammer issues seem to originate from the OTSG. To resolve these issues, I put my PhD research to use and developed a dynamic simulation. This tool was used to understand how the OTSG responds to different upsets in operating conditions and why this causes water hammer problems. Over the last couple of years, I have enhanced the simulation to include different control strategies and to understand how this impacts steam quality control. Now for the agenda of this series. We will finish part one with a quick review of drum boiler operation and an overview of a typical OTSG layout. Part two will lay out the necessary theory. We will begin by reviewing how a Venturi is used to measure the steam quality from a pass. The basic physics for the water side behavior will then be presented and I will provide a simple walkthrough to demonstrate how these physics play out during the light off of an OTSG. In parts three and four, I will present a set of animation results to demonstrate how the water side of an OTSG behaves given different changes in operating conditions. All power engineers are familiar with the operation of drum boilers, so it makes sense to review how a drum boiler responds to changes in operating conditions. This will become the basis for understanding how an OTSG responds to changes in operating conditions. Consider this sketch of a drum boiler with heat added to the risers. Steam is created and makes bubbles in the risers. The bubbles occupy a certain amount of volume. The drum level is held constant at the normal level and the supply of feed water is equal to the flow rate of steam that is produced. Then we decrease the firing rate. This makes less steam and now there are fewer bubbles in the risers. This means the volume of water in the risers goes up and draws down the level of water in the steam drum. This is the shrink and swell phenomenon that occurs in a drum boiler. Another common disturbance is a sudden drop in feed water temperature. This causes a sudden quenching in the steam drum and interrupts the steam production. With a sudden drop in steam flow rate to the superheater section, the steam temperature exiting the superheater can become very high. This understanding of drum level dynamics has led to standard sophisticated control systems to manage drum level during changes in firing rate. The result is that drum boilers are very reliable and do not experience spurious trips. 
a drum boiler is expected to trip maybe once a year, and this is due to an actual mechanical or instrumentation failure and must be fixed. Here's a picture of a typical oil field OTSG from Innova in the Fort McMurray area. Approximately 78% steam quality is produced between 8,000 and 15,000 kPa, depending on the required steam injection pressure. These OTSGs look like they have a design firing rate of about 250 million BTU an hour and a feed water rate of 150 tons an hour. The feed water is typically saline, often with 8,000 ppm of total dissolved solids. This is a schematic for an OTSG. Boiler feed water is provided from a set of high pressure feed pumps. Each OTSG has a boiler feed water flow control valve. The feed water is split into several passes, typically four or six. Each pass has its own flow meter and pass balancing valve to maintain even splitting of the flow among the passes. On a 250 million BTU an hour unit, each pass is typically three inches in diameter. Water begins at the top of the convection section and winds its way down and picks up heat from the hot flue gas. The water approaches the boiling point at the outlet of the convection section. Then, each pass makes a few laps across the radiant section where water is boiled to produce steam. The velocity increases as the mixture moves through the radiant section. The steam is at about 78% quality at the end of the radiant section. At the outlet, each pass flows through a pressure drop device, either a venturi or a flow nozzle. The measured pressure drop is used to infer the steam quality from each pass. Then, the passes combine. The normal flow path is through a check valve and to a separator vessel. Steam then goes to the well pad and hot blowdown is used to preheat the boiler feed water. The startup path is through a control valve and then through a low pressure line to a pond or tank. There are a number of trips that are often present in an OTSG. On the water side, pass flow deviation is a frequent trip in several operating plants. Steam quality trips are, are less common now than they were a few years ago. On the fire side, low O2 or high combustibles in the flue gas is a common trip. On the firing train, low fuel gas supply pressure is a common trip that prevents reliable light off. The control system is often very complex and there are several PID controllers that can fight with each other, i.e. pass flow control and the total boiler feed water flow control. This understanding of drum boiler behavior has permitted the development of very robust control systems for managing steam drum level. The result is that drum boilers are very reliable and do not suffer from frequent or spurious trips, such as low drum level during normal operation. The current objective with OTSG operation is to increase the steam quality from 78% to 85% and to maintain reliable operation. If we understand how the water side of an OTSG behaves, then we can develop robust control systems. The result should be the elimination of spurious trips, increased reliability, and increased steam quality. Let's dive in. The next session will go over the theory for the water side behavior. I'm Kevin Dorma. Please visit my webpage at www.kevindorma.ca for more information. Bye for now.